Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Jerome L. Green Space. We're so happy to see you. I'm Ed Yim. I'm the Chief Content Officer of WQXR. It's my privilege to serve in that role. And um, tonight is the first event in the Artist Propulsion Lab 2022. What is Artist Propulsion Lab? Well, in the deepest, darkest days of the pandemic when artists had no gigs and they were not touring and they some of them quite frankly were struggling, we wanted to do something. And so we picked six artists who we thought could use our help and we put a little money in their pockets and they did concerts and they were on the air and they curated conversations. And now as we come into the new normal, uh, you know, artists are busy again, thank goodness, but we enjoyed having the artists as part of the WQXR family so much. They just infused us with new ideas and creativity and we still felt that with our platforms and radio and podcasting and the green space that we still could do something to uh, lift artists who are in the early parts of their career um, to have our audiences get to know them and appreciate them. Um, so we're very excited that this is the second group and I'm going to hand things over to our beautiful midday host, Annie Bergen. I was just telling Annie, you have the most special voice on the air. Um, I just love listening to you. It just soothes me. So you get to see Annie in person now, the, per the face with the voice. And so please help me welcome Annie Bergen. Well, good evening, everyone. And thank you for coming to the Jerome. <laughs> tip over here, Jerome Mel Green Performance Space. Um, I'm Annie Bergen. I'm the midday host on WQXR. And we are thrilled tonight to bring you the first concert from our new round of Artist Propulsion Lab musicians. And the spotlight tonight is on Emmy Ferguson. And she is really a triple threat um, because she is a flutist, but also a singer and a composer. And her repertoire ranges from the Renaissance to the modern day. She plays a variety of flutes as well, and you'll see some of those tonight. And her mastery of the Baroque flute has led her to uh, be appointed principal flute of the Handel and Haydn Society. She has a number of recordings out. Her debut album is called Amour Cruel, and that takes classical French songs and sets them uh, in a contemporary indie pop style. So very unique. And Emmy is currently on the faculty of the Juilliard School, the Bach Virtuosi Festival, and she's taught at the University of Buffalo. Now she's asked uh, her fellow Artist Propulsion Lab cohorts, the Isuri Quartet, to join her tonight. This quartet was founded 10 years ago. They have been called ast astounding and captivating by the Washington Post. The Isuris also have many awards uh, that they've won, and their debut album, Blueprinting, was nominated for a Grammy. So please welcome Emmy Ferguson and the Isuri Quartet. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. I just, I got so excited about Artist Propulsion Lab that I forgot housekeeping. Welcome to those of you who are listening on the live stream. We're glad to have you as well. And because we are doing a live stream, please check your phones and make sure that they're off. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome, Isori Quartet. So the program tonight is called I Leapt Across Oceans, and Emmy has called it a transformation of music across peoples, instruments, and places. And in that vein, they start out with a traditional folk song that I think you may recognize. Then there's something by Bach, and finally a French piece by Clément Janequin. Emmy Ferguson and the Isuri Quartet live in the green space.
Emmy Ferguson and the Isuri Quartet live from the green space. That was wonderful. That, what was that last thing? That wasn't my high school French. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a French song from the 1500s by an incredible composer, Clément Janequin, um, whose music is only just being rediscovered by a lot of people now. Um, but it is gorgeous. And that piece was originally written for a four-part choral texture. And you can hear those beautiful lines being woven throughout all five of us. And it's one of my favorite ones that translates to, Every night you come to me in sweet and graceful dreams, but every day you are away from me. Therefore, all I want to do is daydream. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and we heard the Bach in the middle, the yes. aria from the Goldberg Variations, and you began with Barbara Allen. Tell us about that. Well, Barbara Allen, sort of one of the most um, well-known, I would say, folk songs that has traveled a long way. Um, start, the earliest date we have for this is 1666 in Scotland. So actually right between the Goldberg and when the, the Toutes les Nuits would have been written. So they're all kind of in the same area. And of course this song 
traversed across the ocean um, and has become an American favorite, especially in the Appalachian um, folk world. And so this is our homage to that, sort of a mixture of all of the different versions and just a really fun way to start things off mm -hmm. tonight. And uh, why did you put those three together? Oh, goodness. Well, this whole program is one that I was really interested in trying to look at this idea of transformation, of people, of music, and how, as we move throughout the world, the songs and the stories that we bring with us come and transform into new things that mm -hmm. you know, will always stay with us in some version. So the next set is a grouping of four pieces, and it starts off with contemporary composer Michael Hirsch. So tell us about that. Yes, this is a piece, um, this is an excerpt of a much longer piece um, that I'm so excited to share with you. This is a piece that was written during the pandemic. Um, he, uh, Michael was writing it and, and calling me and having me play different techniques and setting it back over the phone. Um, so this is one, this, is this idea of transformation that's happening sort of in real time as I try to create the sounds that he was asking for. And you'll hear there are some sounds you haven't heard yet tonight. I'm joined with the Izuri on stage, which helps me because usually I can only play one note at a time. But in this piece, you'll actually hear me playing multiple notes at a time. Um, and this piece and all of the pieces in this next set are sort of taking a look at the idea of being torn apart. Um, in a variety of different ways. We start with um, unrung, apart always, and then we go to Rhiannon and Giddens at the purchaser's option, and then maybe some more familiar territory to Luciano Berrio's version of Black is the Color, and then finally to another French song from the 1700s called J'avais cru quand vous aimant, I thought that if you loved me, I would be happy. <laughs> All right, let's hear this set, and then we'll talk more with Emmy Ferguson and the Isuri String Quartet, live from the Great Space.
Je 
We heard music by Michael Hirsch, then Rhiannon Giddens, Luciano Barrio, and Mozart. Yeah, just a little <laughs> snippet in there. <laughs> okay. If you've just joined us, Emmy Ferguson, and that's people online, um, uh, and the Izuri String Quartet, we are live in the green space. Emmy and Izuri are members of the 2022 WQXR Artist Propulsion Lab. This is a group of musicians we've chosen to work on a variety of musical projects this year, including concerts like this one in the green space. We just heard those four pieces from composers past to present, exploring a theme of torn apart, as you mentioned before, um, and also the theme before of transformation. Does any of that have to do with your own uh, background, that you were born in Japan, and then you lived in the UK, and then came to the US? Yeah, and I think actually all of us here have um, you know, very disparate moments in our life around <laughs> the world, and so it's wonderful because we get to bring all of that every time we come on stage and to get to share that with each other and learn from each other. It's, it's been such a joy to put this program together and I, I'm so grateful for the Izuri Quartet to you know, have, have said yes to this crazy idea and um, <laughs> it's just so fun. So. Have you always been interested in multiple genres? Yes, um, I mean, why not? Uh -huh. There's so much great music <laughs> out there and it's, it's just to limit ourselves to just one, I think, would be heartbreaking for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> now, I learned that besides your musical degrees that you also studied science, in particular epidemiology. Yes, right? I did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting as we're going through a pandemic. It's, it's it definitely like. is, you know, it's it's the sort of thing at this point that I'm, I'm uh, very out of school. So I know a little too much um, to, to, to not get the brain going, but also uh, way too little about what's happening right now, so it's a dangerous spot to be in, but I have so much admiration for all of our scientists who are, who are working um, so hard to make it possible for us to be able to perform live, and it's such a joy to see right. all of you here in the studio with us at WQXR, and to also now have this like dual function of being able to also stream online and reach our families that are all around the world, mm -hmm. so it's, mm -hmm. it's very fun. So you curated this program, um, and besides being your cohorts in the APL program, why did you decide to bring the Isori Quartet into this? Well, they're amazing, right? I mean, give them a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Isori Quartet just by itself is, oh my gosh, it, I love listening to, to I love listening to them and to play with them like this. Is, this is our first time working together in this formation, but we've all known each other in a variety of different formats for a very long time. And so for me, this kind of feels like a wonderful homecoming um, to get to share and make music with all four members of the Izuri Quartet um, and to really share pieces of music that are incredibly personal for all of us. Um, and pieces that have become even more personal this week as we've worked on them. Yeah, I bet. So let me speak to cellist uh, Karen Uzunian of the Izuri Quartet. What's, what's Izuri mean? Does it have a meaning? It does. It's a style of Japanese woodblock printing that primarily uses shades of indigo and blue ink. Um, it was a Prussian blue ink that was imported from Europe to Japan and it's an incredibly vibrant and detailed art form uh, that really kind of seemed to resonate with us and what we do with our instruments and music. Mm -hmm. um, so we loved the, the name and everything it evoked. Right. What was it like putting together this program with Emmy? It felt <laughs> so fun and as though we have been collaborating for years, wow. truly. Um, actually, this whole program feels very simpatico with what our quartet is actually playing and exploring a lot these days. We've been playing vocal music that's arranged for string quartet lately um, by Hildegard von Bingen and Barbara Strozzi that you'll hear in our final set, for example. And we're also exploring you know, a lot of different songs, some of our favorite songs, arranging them, having friends arrange them for string quartet. So it was actually kind of a perfect <laughs> melding of interests, um, this kind kind of variety and span of genre and style and to combine that with Emmy. 
It sounds serendipitous, definitely. Yeah, totally. And you are also APL members. What are your plans uh, as APL artists? Yeah, so we're exploring a lot of um, neat things this year. We're really excited to be part of APL. And one thing is, like I mentioned, we're exploring songs. So we are working on this Izuri songbook this year and a song-themed program um, that we'll be performing in a recital um, later this year. We're also um, further developing our uh, kids series called Izuri Kids. And this is um, a series of videos that we've, we started creating uh, once the pandemic started uh, and we were producing ourselves. Um, they're, they're fun, they're whimsical, they're sort of introducing uh, young folks to, to musical concepts, but in um, very creative ways. So Great. we're gonna be um, developing some of that further. Great. Looking forward to that. Emmy, I see you're holding the Baroque flute, correct? Yeah. Yes. Now, <laughs> we <just> we've transformed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we're up to the th third set of music, and I understand the theme is Nightingale? Yes. So um, when we all sort of were putting our heads together about this program, um, the Azuri Quartet mentioned that they have this incredible arrangement by another good friend of ours, Alex Fortes, of Barbara Strozzi's, and I'm going to probably pronounce it really poorly, Karen. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, that's much better than I would have done. Um, and of course, what does that translate to? The nightingale. And as a flute player, I get to pretend to be nightingales all the time. Um, I think these guys get to do that a lot, too. It's one of the great joys of being a musician is getting to imitate nature. Um, in addition to the the whole concept we've been exploring tonight, and Karen mentioned the Izuri will explore later this year, which is song, and our ability as instrumentalists to imitate the voice as much as we can. So you'll, there's these two parallel things happening in this next set. The Barber Strozzi, which was originally a, a song for soprano um, with ensemble that's now been arranged for string quartet, um, you don't hear the words, but the story, I think you'll still be able to hear the story. Karen, do you mind sharing a little bit about the story? Sure. It's uh, based on the Greek Philomena myth. Um, a woman has been assaulted, and this is sort of her song of rage in this in this setting of Barbara Strozzi. Um, it's, it's a very powerful powerful piece, um, and Alex Fortes did an incredible job of, of setting it for string quartet. And it sort of shows us these, these dual sides of the nightingale that I think a lot of us sort of think of, oh, it's just a beautiful bird that sings at the nighttime, but hearing this sort of multiplicity of what, um, what, this, what this bird and the story behind it in that Greek myth and it resonated so much with me because I have this song that I that I um, sort of love, love so much. Is the song that actually I think made me want to play the Baroque flute, which is Pourquoi du Rossignol? Why, sweet nightingale? And it's in its original uh, seven, uh, sorry, early 18th century format, is the most sweet and beautiful song that. Louis the Fourteenth may have been played to sleep with, mm -hmm. um, but in the version that I had made, it turned. I turned it into minor, and it was this kind of like that rageful side of the nightingale that they were mentioning is in the Strozzi, and so it was like yes, these two things <laughs> work so well together, and what it would be so fun to start it off playing some Bach on this instrument, but keeping that idea of that dual voice going on. And you heard some of that in Michael Hirsch's Unrung Apart Always. And this arrangement that I made of the Bach was really inspired by his piece um, because he was asking me to do all these um, vocal techniques while I was playing the flute. And so you'll hear in this first one, this also this dual voice of the nightingale in the Bach that leads us into the rest. All right, let's hear it. Emmy Ferguson and the Azuri Quartet live in the green space.
that was a, a lovely 440A. We're going down. Mm hmm. 
Why, sweet nightingale, in this dark abode, do you wake me before dawn? The final words yeah. in our program <laughs> tonight, ending our evening with flutist and singer and composer Emmy Ferguson and the Izuri Quartet live in the green space. Emmy and the Izuri are part of our Artist Propulsion Lab series. Thank you so much, Emmy, for curating this program and to our members of the Izuri Quartet, um, violinist Emma Frucht and Miho Saigusa, uh, violist Ayane Kozaza and cellist Karen Uzunian. Another round of applause. <laughs> And our thanks to the staff at the Green Space and the WQXR production team. And thank you for coming to the Green Space and everyone watching online. Thank you for tuning in as well. I'm Annie Bergen, and have a good night. <laughs>